I cannot say it enough. We're divorced. Yes, for those that's watching, Karen and I, we have divorced. I'm still in love with Karen. She's still in love with me. We got to figure it out. But while we're... I am going to show you the full live that Dion DeRico from Doubling Down with the DeRicos did. He was sitting with Eric and his mother Gigi and he addressed everything and Eric as well. They addressed the rumors that people have been spreading against them. Uh, he also addressed the child support payments. He addressed why it's so low or, you know, low for what people are considering it. Uh, he addressed the fact that he is actually paying for two households right now because apparently he and Karen are actually living separately so it was very interesting another thing too he addressed the negativity that has been coming their way and how he's really been shocked that you know although there have been positive messages they didn't come from the people he expected them to necessarily come from and i believe he absolutely had a point and if we are honest with ourselves we see that all the time so take a look at this and then let me know your thoughts yeah you can't yeah he can't screw over no more that's good I just want to have it where, where for the most part, everyone's yeah. in there. Yeah. I'm waiting for you guys to get in here. You say what? Oh, I was saying I don't see your number going up. Yeah, that's because you remember it takes a minute for people to, for it to like notice everyone. What's up, everybody? What's up, what's up, what's up? We just Hello. come. Hey, Gigi. They hey, Gigi. We just come on here. I thought it was good to address some of the uh some of the things that we've been seeing and and hearing and I think what really prompted this was because I had a young lady come on my she DM'd me. You know, we understood when we did this TV show, we understood that, you know, we were sort of putting ourselves our and lives. our lives our lives out yeah. there. That's cool. You know, it's okay. I I expect to have the the barrage of attacks, I'm okay with all of that. That's not my biggest issue. I think I take offense when someone inboxes me their ideology from a perspective that's limited to 47 minutes from a television show of our lives. Yeah. And make up this narrative that everyone has seemed to run with and it derives at nothing because we have we have two positive adults, or shall I say two positive adult men, yeah, men. men in our family. Yeah. So our family is, of course, as many of you know who watch the show, we're comprised of a large family. It's 18 of us, uh, only two men. Then we have two women with three women now a day. And then we have, of course, boys and girls, children. So I'm constantly being inboxed, you know, based off of the divorce, the talks of the divorce. I'm constantly being inboxed on what's going on, where are we now. Uh, some of it y'all saw on the television show. We are divorced. Yes, uh, we're filming right now. We are currently filming um, our show. So you guys will be able to sort of understand what led to the divorce, how we got to the point of a divorce. Um, and just how esoteric a divorce is. So that's a whole nother uh, animal that I can't really discuss right now, but you guys will see it, like I say, on the show that we're airing, that we're filming right now. But I think the, mo the most issues that I have is all the salacious shit that some of you, not all of you, some of you come up with. It's just out of this world. And like Eric made a point earlier, what was your point about the... Rumor, how a rumor can be started. Yeah, that, that rumor derives from people that's in the circle, that know people personally, not from a fan section that's speculating on things that's not explained. Exactly. So it's like, you know, for some reason, I think, and it, it, I think it speaks to reality TV or to some reality TV. I think Jerry Springer, he didn't have a, he didn't do a good, service to us as a whole when he came out with all these fights and shit on the tv shows i think that hurt just the television reality sector as a whole because now we can't see just something wholesome without 
figuring out or thinking of some salacious shit happening behind closed doors. I think that's my biggest issue is that from watching our show, you see a loving family. You see a loving mother slash grandmother. Yes. You see an adopted son that I'm always telling people, this is my son. I mean, he couldn't be more my son had he been blood related. And that shows throughout our television show. Anyone who knows us personally, they really, of course, see it and know it. Uh, there's no drama in our family outside of the drama we just recently had. And that was between Karen and I. But outside of that, there's no drama in our family outside of the normal family challenges. And I think what really uh, sends my rocket to the moon, so to speak, is when people in one area, the apple don't fall far from the tree. I think it's important that many of you understand that Gigi raised me as a single uh, parent. Yeah. Gigi's a very alpha woman. Yeah. So she raised an alpha man. Yes. Um, I don't think she was setting out to raise an alpha man. I didn't mm -hmm. set out to become an alpha man. It's just by my environment. I'm thankful to God that I'm the man that I am because that's what led to me being the provider that I am. Uh, many of you have had discrepancies with why is my child support so low? Well, let me address that. Karen pays the medical insurance. And so because she pays the medical insurance, which is about $2,000 a month, the legal fair equity of it is that I pay her half of the money she's paying for health care. But let me be very clear. I cover every bill in both of our houses because we now live in separate houses. Yes, we do. I cover bills at both houses. That's two washers, uh, two washing machines and dryers. That's two kitchens. That's two stoves. That's bathrooms at both houses, that's toilet paper, that's light bill, gas bill, mortgages, uh, hazard insurance. I cover all of that. So when you think that I just have abandoned my children, and this is for the ones who think it, not for the ones who don't think it. But when you think I've just abandoned my children, my biggest question is where have I shown actions of abandonment? I think many of you see how... Gigi is and see the, the, the woman that Gigi is, the mother that Gigi is. If I were to do such a thing, I would still have to answer to my mother as that a 53 exactly year old man. Right. If I, if I thought about it yeah. and then on top of the issues, but oh my God, I just can't believe it. He's only paying a thousand dollars. That's only $83 per child. Well, do y'all know I cover every single bill that's in our family? Every single bill that's in our family, I cover I say that not as bragging. I'm proud to be in the position to do it. But more than that, I'm thankful to God that I have a mother that raised me with the understanding to know my job as a man responsibility. and responsibility as a man is to do it. So I'm here in my children's lives as a father, not just taking care of the bills, but as a hands on taking them to the games, spending time with them, wrestling with my boys, uh, playing makeup with my daughters. I'm here as a hands-on father because I want to be. I enjoy it. I enjoy it whether Ken and I are together or not. We have our issues that we're trying to work together or work through. But irregardless, uh, regardless of that, we have a responsibility to our 14 children. And that responsibility is to provide a loving, nurturing environment, which I'm going to always do and Karen will always do, even if she and I don't see eye to eye with each other. That happens in relationships. I've had people telling me, you know, y'all are supposed to make it work because of... So if we stay together and was fighting, would that be healthier for the children? I mean, I just, I, I, I have so many questions when some of this stuff is brought to me. It's like, what the hell is some people thinking? I mean, and I don't never take to social media like this, but it's really perplexing when the rumors have come up about Eric and I fucking, I mean, really, excuse my French, but that's how I feel it. To know, like, when all this is going on, where is my mother? Yeah, because I want to know how blind do you think that I am or would even have to be to oversee that, to, to look past that if that was a fact? That's not. Eric is just like my grandson. I mean, from, from his soul. I think, actually, Eric, you might have been some kind of way. We should have been doing some DNA. But, yeah, there's no way. You all say that you admire me or... Uh, you look up to me and 
Thank you. I appreciate that. I also appreciate all the prayers. But when I look and I see these comments about my son and my grandson here, it really hurts my heart. Where do you think I am when all this is going on? Of course, I don't live with them. But do you know I have 14 grandchildren that confide in me on a regular. If anything, anything went down any kind of way suspiciously, my grandchildren come to me. I mean, they'll in some cases come to me before they'll come to their parents, before they'll go to their parents. And don't get it wrong, they go to their parents. But I am so happy and thankful to God that they have that relationship with me. So when I see these comments, and I know my grandchildren, they go on social media, I don't know what to think of these people. I don't know these people that, that's constantly inboxing me and telling me they love me and they love my family. How? Don't you ever think that maybe it's possible that my grandchildren could get a hold to some of this? What do you think that's going to do to them? I just, I just think that you're using your mind in places that you really shouldn't. And like he was saying about watching these Lifetime movies, <laughs> we're Lifetime reality, but right. we're not Lifetime movies. Right. We are Lifetime realities. And our reality, it do not consist of this stuff that y'all keep trying to put on social media about my son and my grandson. So I, I think, I think... I said my piece. Now, I may have to interrupt in a minute when something <laughs> else hit my mind because y'all know I am of seasoned years, and sometimes I don't remember like I once did. But as it comes to me, I might have to interrupt. But in having said that, I would just really hope and pray that y'all would take into consideration what if this was you. All we're doing, yeah, we did a, maybe we did a, uh, unhealthy thing when we put our lives out before the world. I wouldn't even did. say that. that. But the thing about it is, we would have never did it had there been anything for us to hide. We Exactly who you see us to be, that is exactly who we are. That's on and off the camera. And I mean, that, that is for real. Anybody that has ever met me would tell you I'm the same person when they meet me in the street as I am when they see me on television. So, Eric or dear y'all, take it over because right now I got to take a break. I'm, my oxygen is getting a little low and I got to replenish that. But if I feel the need to intervene again, I have to come at you with it. What do you want to say? I mean, my, my thing is I just think that oh, if you can dish it out, then be ready to receive it. We're not the the average people who have been on television before us who politically wanted to be correct and let y'all say whatever you want to say. We're entitled to a response. And yeah. I get a lot yeah. of DMs from women who claim to be friends of the show. I mean, fans of the show or uh, admire me to some degree. And... I don't understand from anyone who think that we are a family and you can be friends with me and have something bad to say about who I call family. That don't make sense. And None. because this is a woman's network or a woman's uh when he say platform, one, yeah, he says TLC. TLC. Yeah, specifically is is more women uh, demographics is watching TLC than it is men. So unfortunately the 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 Direction of the show is, for the most part, guided by the fact that it's mostly women watching it. And that could be a problem. And more than I think the bigger problem for me is it seems to really come from more of our own community. Like, you know, our Caucasian brothers and sisters, I don't get the, the negative comments from. It's my own community. And I think that's what most troubles me is it comes from my own community. Uh, you know, we come from some of us broken households. And I think the, the beauty in our show is we showcase a house of people that's full of love and it's not broken. And even though Karen and I have an our challenges, our family is not broken. Mm -hmm. I want to be very clear with that. And that's the sentiment that you'll see, 
you know, echo throughout all of our show and even going forward that our family is not broken. And I think that's one of the things I'm most proud of. I'm very proud of having a young man, an adult son that's here to help me uh, protect the women of our family, our children. And then to, to, to know that, unfortunately, some of us have watched too many Lifetime movies. And yeah. I, I happen to love Lifetime. And I've watched many of Lifetime shows with Karen. But I know how twisted you know, the mindset is of, you know, some of the families or some of the people on Lifetime. But when I see that same level of sickness being um, displayed. displayed or not even displayed, um, being perceived, being perceived or made up. I won't even say perceived. Some of it is just made up. It's like it's hard to just see that there's a family that gen gen genuinely have love and respect for each other. Yeah. That's the thing that our family really consists of. And why does it consist of that? Because just like many of you, we've had issues with our other families. Yes. So one of the things that I wanted to do and Karen wanted to do and Gigi wanted for us to do was to showcase the love that we really genuinely have, yeah. but on this platform. And that's the thing that we've always done. We've always been real. We've always showcased that. But this recent stuff with, you know, Eric and my biggest issue is I can take it. I'm older than Eric. I'm twice Eric's age. Like Gigi, I'm a little seasoned in this thing. But to know that this young man has gone through God knows what prior to being adopted yes. by us, which is what led us to adopt him. And then he has to be brought into and attacked with this with this level of attack out of nowhere. I mean, where's the human compassion for just a human being? Forget television. Forget reality yes. TV. Just he's a human being that happened to be loved by us and taken in. And then he has to go on social media and read all this crap. Yes. And I tell him, listen, stay off that damn social media. Stay off of it. Don't let it bother you. And I think what bothers him is because Eric has such a pure, heart. genuine, honest heart. heart yeah. And it really, how they say Ignorance only bothers the person that's not ignorant. Yes. It doesn't bother ignorant people. Ignorance doesn't bother the people that's being ignorant. You know, so. They're on social media. They say whatever they feel like. Right, hey, we we back. Yeah, we back. So, 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 go ahead. I'm unbothered by the comments, specifically if it's about sexuality or things like that. Because I'm secure in who I am. But what bothers me is, like you say, our community attacking us the most. Mm -hmm. And it bothers me also that our, our own community, because I, it, it helps me appreciate our brothers and sisters of, of other races, yes. not just Caucasian, but Latin, Asian. We have a lot of people from other races that watch our show. And it really, it, it, it definitely opens up my eyes to just as a whole, being able to love and be loved by other people. Because I mean, we are a loving family. We're a loving African-American family. But to be attacked by your own, oh, it's like, yeah. when does it stop? I mean, really and truly, it's, a, it's one of those situations my grandmother used to say, you damned if you do and you damned if you don't. Because it's like, you know, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Don't misunderstand that at all. But I hope that this will enlighten some, educate some, and change the trajectory in which some of the viewers are making things up. I mean, you know, go to those reality shows that's, that's really doing the salacious drama. things, right? That has the drama. Go to those. I mean, that we, we in this time, day and time, we have television shows that fit everyone's um, uh, uh, desires. But when you come to this one, I, I really, imagination, right. But when you come to this one, you come to our show, getting that, that love and that connection that, and that sense of family that we are. And I just think it's like you're doing a disservice to yourselves. You're doing a disservice to us. You're doing a disservice to other people that are going through drama, going through family issues, yes. and that need that getaway, that need that love that, that they're able to get from our show. You know, we're dealing with a lot right now, as many of you know, with my mother's health challenges, with my nephew. You know, speaking of that, thank you guys for all the ones that's been loving us yes, and sending us great messages and, yep, and donating yeah. to him. But, you know, we're dealing with that. We're dealing with, of course, Karen and I, you know, going through the challenges. This is new for us. This is new for our family. So we're dealing with challenges just like everyone else. And we don't want any pity. You know, it, it is what it is. We're all humans. Right. But it's just 
have compassion for your fellow human. I mean, really and truly have compassion for your fellow human, especially a person like this young man sitting behind me who didn't have family. You know, he had, of course, blood relatives, but they wasn't family like we are. And I love the I love the way he interacts with our children. You know, they yes. say children will tell you the truth. Our children love him. Yes. They love him. Love, I mean, he's love. their big brother. Love, literally. Love, literally, yeah. They love loving. They do. They I, really want, do. I want to add some too. Um, <clears throat> some of the, these comments and things is more so doing a disservice to the to our black community because to those outside of us, this is what they see of us. They see a black television show, and when they look through the comments, and you see a lot of black folks attacking us. How does that look to the people That's outside? Right. How do we... That's true. Come, our television show has been showing a uh, presentation of the most high. Pre, uh, we've been representing the black community well. Well-spoken, yeah. well-behaved, not ratchet, ghetto, all of those things. But when you attack us, you show other people how to treat us. How can y'all find the thoughts that y'all have to think what y'all think about us based on what we do on the show. If we was on the show, y'all wouldn't like it if we was on the show. Yeah, you know how black people are and they black business, they half-ass do this or you know this and <laughs> you know true. that. Y'all would be attacking us if we speak some truths about the black community. But we, we, we pick the things that are the best when we speak about the black community. And for hey. those who are sensitive about the idea of who don't ski, who don't camp, Black people know we don't ski and we don't camp. It's okay that a minority of us do that. That's true. But y'all make it seem like it's the end of the world that we're using our platform to expose that we are a minority in experiences. And we're trying to bring attention to that so that more blacks will do it. But y'all exactly. got a problem when, when we try to be creative and address topics that consists in our community. And then y'all got a problem about things we don't talk about. How you got a problem with what you don't see? Y'all don't see nothing but love and a story about parenting and being a pillar of the community. He brought me into his life and he already had a dozen children. How many for the black people out there? How many black people open their door up to anybody right. to help them? Because we, we in such a scarce mindset and for the poverty and for the uh, the middle class, it's just not common. It's normally people outside the race that you create these bonds with. But y'all got a man who took me in. I understand that black people aren't used to seeing yeah. such compassion yeah. in our community where another man who he's, he's 30 years older than me. He has enough wisdom and wit to read my character and he approved of it. You think he's so stupid that I'm around his children and I'm sneaking That's around right, and geeking? Right. You think right. Gigi's so stupid that if he missed it, she missed Rhonda it? No you think Karen's so stupid? Right. It's just a half-assed compliment to say how much you respect Gigi right. or how outstanding of a mother Karen is. But then you have these things to say about Karen and Gigi family. So right. if, if y'all want to talk and address things, let's have a discussion. But you don't have to attack to create that discussion. Because I absolutely that very well attack, said. Y'all yes. attack, and then when we reply, somebody say something nasty, and then you reply. They like, oh, thank you. I'm, I've never thought that you was going to reply. We got a lot of trauma in the black community, but yeah. let's use this platform to be more enlightened about changing those yes. things. We don't have to. You black people out there, y'all know how it is. When a when a black person is flying, looking good, it's where you think you going? They, they, you think you crispy. Good. Because black people are, they don't even recognize how we embody negative and we yeah. try to use that to convey positive. Just say, damn girl, you looking good or you looking handsome. Don't say, you, you think, think you, you the shit, that, huh? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> black people know that you complimented us, but there's an underlying issue in our community. If y'all love us, love us. But learn how to just 
present these questions and theories in a more positive way. I'll answer them. I'm not running from none of the questions. And, and neither am I. And I'm not a you know I'm, I'm not, not insecure. <laughs> I have I have women in my life. That's not a problem. If 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 if, if y'all think he's gay, then I'm gay too. No problem. We still live in it. It don't hurt me. It's I just that I understand that. if we're going to be real, black people have our issues and we don't know how to communicate. Absolutely. So for the black people out there attacking us, just talk to us. Just just say, hey, you know, it's unusual for me to see a father uh, embrace another grown man. Hey, I'm right. fortunate. Be yeah. happy for my good fortune yes. that I crossed paths with someone who was so compassionate and so observant of what he's seen me going through without me ever telling him. Y'all don't know that me and him used to argue the first year <laughs> and a half, two years of us knowing with yes. each other. Because I'm a grown-ass man who raised myself from childhood. Everything that I know and this person that I am today is an example of me choosing what I felt was good for me. I didn't have too many people sit down and say, uh how to choose a woman properly. And as a result, I choose the type of women that I've been with in the past. And I'm divorced after a committed, loyal relationship. It's like, because when you're in foster care, you tend to have a underdog, supportive mentality. I didn't used to judge women for leaving out the house for wearing bonnets or for wearing their pajamas to the store. Or for just cussing too fucking much. None of us may not should be cussing. But damn sure I don't care if y'all think it's sexist. It's not ladylike for a woman exactly. to be cursing a lot. It's not ladylike for a woman to to want to do masculine things. Smoking is bad for everybody. But do y'all really think it's cute for a woman to have a black and mild to her face? Do y'all really think it's cute for women to be drinking a fifth Boy, that's to themselves? It's... And so I understand that these are our black community issues. We lack fathers. But yeah. every time you see two black men come together, it doesn't mean that they gay. It, it just It's just fortunate that a minority of us still can come together. I lived in dozens of homes. I live in several shelters. That's in foster care and with my mother. I've been around a lot of groups of people and families. And only three families... Out of all of the families that I came across was good to me, treated me like family and didn't make like me feel like being. like a human being. Did you just and, say, and, yeah, and didn't make me feel like they family was more important. I know I've been in enough foster homes to understand that the average person is going to choose their family over me, no matter how loyal and loving and trustworthy I am. That's what I got to deal with. I got to continue to live my life, even with them, with understanding that wholeheartedly they may embrace me as they family and see me, but it's still my trauma and my experiences that allow me to still know that there's an inch of... She's not there. Who's home? Uh, to everybody else. Okay, just text uh, them. With that ear so, so with that being said, text I'm just saying for the black people, not that other people guy, haven't guy, said things, but I don't care what they say. On. I'm addressing the black community because we're black. And I understand that it's so unfamiliar for uh, just black people to come together in general who not family. And so it looks weird. I get that for the black people. It looks weird to see that he was able to cross my path. But why, why can't he have a friend in me? I was grown already. What am I supposed to do? Just start off as his what? As his play son, and I didn't have a father. I didn't have no father figures. You know what my father figure was? Denzel Washington movies, John Gotti, mafia movies, Batman, shit like that. That's where I got my character for. I had to see the representation that I felt was positive for my life. And fortunately, in the reality, I crossed his path. He had he was in a time in his life where things was going on. He saw me and he just felt like I was real. And he wanted to do for me because he looked at my story as one of a person that needed help. Because it's hard to navigate the world without family. So if y'all that upset or jealous or envious that I was lucky. Years ago, Angela Jolie and Brad Pitt adopted all these different race of children. I get that it's more, it's not that it's normal, it's just more acceptable when you Take in someone who's so small they don't know anything, you call them family. But it doesn't mean that adults 
and teenagers don't need family and, and, and ex exempt from being taken in by someone. Yeah. It is a village. And at the end of the day, when somebody stepped to the Dorico household and he's not there, I'm there. Right. His house is protected. When he's not there, I'm there. When I'm not there, he's there. What's the problem? You women should be inspired by the fact that two men was able to come together. He, I was uh, wise and reasonable enough to receive what he was offering to me. Because when he was trying to school me before we, when we first met, I wasn't really adhering to everything because I've been living 20 something years of my own life, raising myself. It takes a lot for me to defer to another man's opinion and guidance when you had to guide yourself. And so for us to be here, it's a beautiful thing. It's a testimony that there are still good people out there. There's yeah. good black men out there. There's good men out there. I'm not the only person he's ever helped. I seen our tenants, dozens of our tenants. He treat everyone the same. It starts off as a tenant landlord situation. And that's, you know, the conversation, you pick up things. He see our problems. It ain't my fault that he noticed that it was a, a, a Thanksgiving. And he's like, what you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm like, nothing. Dad inspired him to invite me to his Thanksgiving. And from there, my character got me here. His character got us here. What's the problem with that? I don't care if I'm 30 years old and I'm, and what? It's a problem that I'm, I'm smart enough to know that while I'm still without children and pretty much like a single man, why not take notes? Why not get reps in handling children hands on with his children? Why? Or would y'all prefer me to be ignorant of the things that he's taught me up until now, get with some woman and now I'm failing as a head of the house. What's the problem? Why are y'all rushing my life? I'm a young man. Do y'all see this economy? Half of us can't afford shit going on in here. And y'all want me to rush to get a woman? Is it really going to make y'all sleep better at night to see that I have girls on deck, that I'm going on a date? Or is it more inspirational to you to see that I'm taking notes and becoming a better man? It's not a rush. What you want me to do? End up with one of y'all? Is, is it that? But let's really talk about it. Y'all can, can text me. Y'all can inbox me. Let's talk about these things. You don't have to attack someone to create the conversation. <laughs> and, and I'm not attacking women. It just happened that this is a woman's network. So it happens that it's the women that saying these things. Right, exactly. And, and that's all and, and that me, it is. And let me say this real quick. It is not an attack on women. It is a, ta it is a speaking up to no, those. It's an attack on those women, though. Yeah, with, with the, yeah, yeah, the ones that's misguided. But also. Who's unhappy. Who's miserable. Who's single mothers. It's a lot of single mothers and no disrespect to them. But I'm just saying, the women who's given the problem have internal issues. Exactly. That's and, all. And, and let me say this. One of the other things is, you know, and this is where I have to thank our other um, races, our other siblings, uh, not siblings, our other brothers and sisters of other races, because in the African-American community, it's not as common to see. I don't drink. I don't smoke. There's not a fight at my house. There's not arguing in my house. There's not... Uh, and, and, you know, and, and even in my house now, it, it never was. And it, I've always believed in coming together in unity. That's what I got from my mother. I watched my mother always be the pillar of our family. And I watched her in many areas be the pillar of the community. She was always taking other uh, children in and they were at our house playing and whatnot. And I just became the male version of my mother. And I didn't even realize I was becoming that. I mean, you know, I say, you don't realize you're your parent till you get old enough. And you're like, damn, I'm my mother. I didn't realize I was becoming that person. So who you see is who I am. That's just, that's just the bottom line. But I do believe that family should always be together. I believe that family should always stick together. And I do believe that in our community, that there are more black men that I have seen that, that are my friends that really are there and present for their families. Unfortunately, on many television shows, it doesn't show that. So it's sort of a, of a, um, wrong depiction of how we are. And I thank God that in our case, we represent uh, in a good way, the way the African-American families can thrive and how we do thrive and that we are up to par with some of our other brothers and sisters of other races. And so to them, that's why the attack isn't coming from them. They recognize this as being normal. 
They recognize the fact that I'm at home and that, you know, Eric is there with us. They recognize that as being normal. But within our own people, it's not normal. And that's a fucking problem. I mean, that's a serious problem that you have a black man present. I don't just take care of the financial side of my children and my family, my household. I am hands on with homework. I cook respectfully. Karen doesn't cook and we don't want her to cook. Trust me, none of us want her to cook for many reasons. But I am the cook. I'm the one that potty trained every one of our children. Uh, I take pride in knowing that I'm that hands-on father. I wouldn't have it no other way. Whether Karen and I are married or divorced or not seeing eye to eye, I will always be actively present in my children's lives. If you guys noticed on the divorce uh, paperwork, it clearly states that we have full joint custody. So when, when, when people are making up these rumors like, oh my God, he just left her with 14 children. I would like for y'all to find that paperwork and send it to me so I can sue the hell out of somebody. I heard that. I would like for y'all to find that paperwork yes. and point out where it says I left my wife. I would never do to my wife what my father, God mother. rest his soul, did to my mother. I would, And I think no woman should have to raise children by themselves. I think it's totally unfair. And so I would never do that. That's not the man that I am. I just, I don't know how to be that kind of man. But I, I want us to recognize good parenting and good leadership within the family. Do, is Eric technically a babysitter? No, Eric is a great ass big brother. That's what he is. He's great a great ass big brother. Big brother. And am I, great do I feel good when I leave my brother. children and, and my wife at the time when I leave home for something? Do I feel good knowing that there's another man there present who I know will go to bat and take a fucker down for messing with my house? Absolutely, I feel good with that. As a man, I'm supposed to. As a man, I'm supposed to set my family up to always be safe in my presence and in my absence. That's the responsibility of a man. I take pride in that. And we have to normalize great parenting. We have to normalize great families. Again, I can't not say it enough. We're divorced. Yes, for those that's watching, Karen and I, we have divorced. I'm still in love with Karen. She's still in love with me. We got to figure it out. But while we're figuring it out, our children cannot be affected. So when you talk to our children, when you see our children, they're loving, they're happy, they're just as excited as they've always been. And we've had to talk to them on many occasions. And you guys will see that in the coming up season. You will see that in the coming up season. So don't worry. We're not. Pause. And we did not know of, of Amani prior to two years ago. So that was not a storyline that was real. He has been on the show because of his sickness. And uh, it was a lot happening while we were filming. And we just wasn't able to cover it. We just, you know, he's in Detroit. Of course, we're here in Vegas. It was a lot we weren't able to cover. He didn't even want to be shown at the point that you guys saw him at the last season was near uh, him. We thought getting better. And then he took, of course, a nosedive and it, it was worse. As of today, he is a little bit better. And we just ask you guys to keep on praying, keeping our family in, yes. in your prayer. And so I'm going to wrap this thing up. Um, anything y'all have to say before I... And yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies out there, y'all can DM me and we can talk. I'm like a counselor. I give great advice <laughs> and like just comes correct. And let's talk. Let's talk about it. I, I give great advice. Ask all my lady friends. I'm I'm a, I'm a healer. Anything you got to say, Gigi? Uh, no, I think I covered it, I think. All right. Well, until until next time, I try I intend on doing more of these lives just to address things that I feel is going on within the community, our home, our family, the world as a whole. And so I appreciate you guys and all the ones that support us. I really do appreciate and love you guys. All right. So we good. I think we're good. All right, Team Dorico, we out. I hope you enjoyed that. Please make sure that you like and subscribe and ring that bell. That way you can stay up to date on all of my videos when I post them. And also I have my cash up below to our blessed if you are able and willing to donate. Thank you guys so much. Let me know your thoughts on this one and I'll speak to you on the next one.